uh, favorite for the U.S. Open. It looks like it's going to be a three-man race. We have number one Novak Djokovic, but he lost in a final to Andy Murray and then another final to uh, uh, Roger Federer. Let's start with the number one. Is How do you think he's playing? Is he playing good reaching two finals, or do you think there's something wrong having lost two finals coming into the U.S. Open? Well, Djokovic, I mean, he's still tough. I mean, of course, it's a, you know, you, you, mentally, you always have to get up to being you know, winning. After winning a tournament, you got to get back up and, and, and do it again. And that's what makes it tough. And Roger's been through it, and he knows. And that's why, you know, when, when he loses, more on the mental aspect of it, not sustaining that level that you need to have when, when you're playing the best. And, um, you know, I think Djokovic obviously knows what to expect. Um, all top players get themselves up for a grand slam. So I'm not looking at any of his losses being any indicator that, that he's not playing well. He's playing very well. He's had the, a great, great year. Won most of those 100 Masters except for Cincinnati. Um, but, um, you know, he, he, he's going to perform. He's going to perform. Are you surprised he's only won one U.S. Open title? I was looking through the records and I was surprised with just one because you know, we like to think of him as the best hardcore player because of how good he's uh, at Australia. But, you know, just one U.S. Open title. Well, you know, uh, Roger has dominated most of the times. And, you know, then came along uh, Del Potro, sort of surprised him. And then, uh, you know, last year, Chilik played his best tennis. And I don't think he's, he's ever going to play that kind of tennis. He just doesn't have it. I mean, that was impeccable tennis that he played last year to beat Roger because Roger should have won, you know. And Nishikori, I, I don't know about him. Um, I, he's had his injuries, and he's has his ups and downs. Can he recreate what he did last year? Uh, I'm not so sure. Okay. I mean, my, my, uh, you want to ask me another one? No, no, go ahead. I, I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt you. I mean, my, my choice is always going to be Roger. I mean, I think that having won Cincinnati was so important to him. Beating um, uh, Djokovic in, in, the, in the way he did, he played him the way he should be playing tennis. You know, serve and volley, his serve is worth a million dollars when he gets that first serve in and he dominates on his serve. Everything else is gravy. You know, I, I think it, it, if it's come from Edberg, which I think it has, even though others have told him you got to serve and volley more, you got to be more aggressive, but, you know, obviously, you know, you have to know when to hit that ball. But it's hard to coach somebody who's been number one and the best like that, you know. He is. He's the best because he reinvents himself every year every tournament. I mean, Luz is a tough one at, at Wimbledon. I'm just sorry that, that he was unable to capitalize on that early break in the first set to go up 5-2, and that was the ball game for him. And, um, you know, but I think he's got another Grand Slam in it, and his best chances are always going to be win Wimbledon in the U.S. Open. And then what about Andy Murray? I mean, he won at the Rogers Cup. Do you think he's coming back to that form in uh, 2013 when he won Wimbledon? And he was really challenging uh, the top Yeah, well, I think, I, you know, I see his attitude being very, very good, much better than it ever was last year. And I think Emily Moresma, for whatever reason, has done a good job on him. They have a great relationship, a calming relationship that is very important for Murray. And I think he's take, taken ownership of, 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 of his game. And, 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 and you know, when, when he misses and, you know, when he's down, he's not as up and down and volatile as he is, complaining, because that's the biggest problem is he talks himself out of it. I mean, he is a great player. He can volley, he can, he can you know, hit any ground stroke, he can do, do it all. Where I see that he loses is his serve. He needs a better ser second serve, he needs a better first serve. I think if he can fix his first and second serve, he's going to, you know, I think he can win more without having to chase down all the balls and, you know, he needs to go up the net as well. You know, but but he is definitely always a tough contender. Always. Nadal, can he be a factor at the U.S. Open? Well, everybody wants to see him come back, and he's got to change his game. But he's not as, you know, flexible as as Roger. I mean, Roger's really flexible. He is a better athlete. He's got better hands, better everything, and so it's a lot easier for him to implement changes in his game. For Nadal, it's very difficult because he is so tune into one style and, and, and he, you know, he's got to beep up his serve. His serve is not going to, first has got to be better, second's got to be better. He's got to stop hanging way back in the baseline. 
He's got to move up the net. He's got to shorten the points. Hey, you know, he's getting up there. Just same thing that happened to, uh, you know, Roger is happening to him. You know, he's now 20, 27, 28, 29, and he's getting up there. And there's got to be changes because they're, they're the rest coming up. So I think he's going to have a tough time, but I'd love to see him come back.